Good evening, everyone. How is everyone this fine evening? Oh, it's a bit cold under that. Let me just put the heater on. <laughs> Haven't been in here. They've been out working in the garage, in the shop, um, and it's a bit chilly. Very chilly. Get under there. So, who have we got? Hello, Craig, Mark, Tomo, Big Bearded Beast, Archinen, Exing Tavern Wars, Jack, and Egan. Cool. Hello, everyone. Ow, 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 ow. I'm trying to see stuff on my screen that shouldn't be visible. Huh? Yay! Ports and. Ooh, yes, that thing's. Oh, good evening, Smog. Nat National Pizza Day yesterday. We had pizza yesterday. I had kebab and pizza ish, so cool. <sighs> I've had a curry tonight. I seem to be eating a lot of curries. This was an Asda curry. It was mighty fine. Cooked by the little one. She is good at cooking stuff. Um, which brings me to. Um, Takeaway for the pro tech here. We've. The house has been upside down. We've had the fridge freezer exploded and just didn't want to do anything. So we had to run around taking stuff to Ronan's house uh, to save it while he lent us space in his freezer. So a new fr freezer came yesterday. Today we had new carpet put in the bedroom because it hasn't been changed in ever um so joe managed to pick up some cheap carpet and that's gone down today so the, the house is a bit of a mess at the moment uh and we've been doing some other bits for asthma day so the garage was all set up differently f just to show off bits and pieces of the garage um or the store um so yeah we've had quite a bit on and then to get actual work done, um, I've done a couple of pieces, which I'll show off. Um, I managed to, on Sunday, I think me and Joe had food poisoning, probably from eating the stuff out the freezer that we were trying to eat really quickly. So we were both bad on Monday as well, um, or Tuesday, Tuesday, Monday, because we were doing D&D &D and I was eating all melting stuff so yes it's been insightful <laughs> uh, and interesting and yes a lot going on so in amongst all this we also realized that tonight is our 98th live stream episode yeah, I'm fine. Uh, I had curry, so I'm definitely fine. So tonight is number 98. Ah, oh, that's just weird, that tooth. That's, yeah. <laughs> it was... And a thing of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. It might have just been over-exuberance and all that sort of stuff. But yes, there was a lot of food eaten and consumed, so it didn't go off and... In hindsight, it might not have been. Oh, hey, it's warm now. <laughs> How many of you are now yawning? So yeah, we had a we've had an interesting couple of days. Um, Joe had a wisdom tooth removed today that had roots on it that can only be described described as um, Cthulhu roots. Uh, yeah, um, duck pancakes. So yes, two off the big one. So tomorrow night we'll be continuing on. Tonight we have our usual giveaway. Unfortunately, Zoe hasn't been able to do any stickers for tonight's lot. Everyone's had stickers for the other ones. I still do have some to send out. I've not had a chance to get some of these um, sent out today. I do apologize. It's just been hectic. Uh, we're doing a big delivery day tomorrow, so we might get some of them out. If you win some today, it might help me on post a bit. So the good news is, 
Um, we've just started playing around with... Uh, and this is jumping the gun a bit because we haven't actually started playing it. Oh, that the one that... It's... Oh, that's about to... Back in a minute. My head's fallen off. So... We have spoke to a couple of distributors and um, games companies. And so far, we have at least one really big giveaway prize for Saturday. So we're probably going to do it from 5 o'clock till 7 o'clock and then passes all over to Rasta from 7 till 9. So if anyone wants to sit back and chill for... Four hours watching streams, perfect opportunity. So, the guys at Warlord Games, now these are the guys that were fantastic for our um, f five o'clock on Saturday, five o'clock Saturday, 100th episode. So, so far, we haven't looked at anything uh, to sort ourselves but we will be doing some giveaways uh, for the 100th episode. But Warlord Games have given us a complete victory at sea starter set to give away for Saturday. More to do with these guys um, as we go on. We've been in touch with Warlord uh, and a new lad that we've been doing bits and pieces with. He's been really brilliant. Um, we've now got more things going on with them, including some work for the stream and streaming with them. So, the first part is, we now stock Victory at Sea. Um, I've already got a starter fleet. The Kriegsmarine, and I have the Bismarck already uh, and I've already got it part painted so I've already got one Egan they actually sorted me out um, a, a demo copy for the store so that's going to we've got another one we've got one in the shop um, we've got one to do as demos Lee always plays the baddies yeah um, so I've got a Kriegsmarine, I've got the Bismarck, uh, the Graf Spray, and some others that are ongoing. But we are probably already going to have to put in a, um, a restock because we have been hit quite hard. And I didn't even get to tell people we've got it yet. How many X-Wing ties? Yeah, I've got very, very loads and loads of X-Wing ties. So we've just found a load of X-Wing ships as well. Um, Jack now searching YouTube Victory at Sea videos. So um, they're, really, they're really cute little ships. Um, so we're going to have that. So there's a lot of boating stuff coming up. Um, so next... So tomorrow night, today's dystopian, tomorrow night's going to be ongoing with Battletech. Um, yeah, I'll come back to that. Um, then next week, Wednesday, we'll have the Saturday stream, which is going to be a special, just a fun stream. Um, then s Wednesday next week will be more of this. But the Thursday we will be opening one of the Victory at Sea boxes and starting to paint it. Um, so you get to see what's in it, you get to see uh, what we're painting on it. So hopefully that will all be set up next week and some other bits and pieces when uh, Warlord get in touch with us. So some good interesting stuff coming from them. So apparently there is two big ships um, destined for the Kriegsmarine, one is the Bismarck, and one is the Bismarck sister ship. So, two decimators, sort of, yep, yeah, okay, I'm done. I'm sold. <laughs> I don't know, they 
catamaran boat sort of thing. So I'll go to the painting cam so people can see what we've been doing. So that is basically the stuff that we've been sorting um, and you watched me build some of them last week. I got the rest of them done. Uh, hello key Bismarck. No, no, and no Tesseract Green Bismarck. <laughs> so we were discussing boats being long and thin for a reason, Mark. <laughs> perfect time to come over on that one so just a couple of bits of uh lee's going to show off it's yeah, uh we've been doing some i've been catching up on some commission work um i have some bits to show uh let me go to medium so you can see it so i've done a tie brute this week so the tie brute is in full camo pattern um anyone who knows will know who it is so it is in the full winter camo pattern so to go along with that one i also did a full camo Um, occupier tank for the Imperials R actually driven by stealth or dark troopers um, so that is ready to roll <laughs> yeah Mark um, so and then I've been doing some uh, tau as well for them uh, for him. So the tau has all been done with zenithal highlighting, which uh, you're going to see a lot of me talking about zenithal highlighting uh, over the next couple of weeks, months. So the tau was resprayed to black. These came through already painted, so they were resprayed to black. Um, zenithal highlighted using. Um, Liquitex acrylic ink. You can do zenithal with a spray can just as easy as you can with a, um, well, just about the same as you can with a, an airbrush. But uh, that was one of them. And then there is another one of a tau set scene. So they need to be finished, which will probably get finished this weekend or this or for this weekend. So commissions been doing some, even though I don't do commissions. Other things, so let me go to close up. It, it, I can't remember the name of them. There's Tau Sept and the red ones. Uh, I can never remember the name of them. Uh, uh, hi, Carl Wolf. Cool. It's good to hear. Uh, yeah, Mama's got to pay the bills. So. A couple of weeks ago, um, and I know a lot of people have been interested in seeing what and how I do with this. Oh, did I smell a kinger? Kinger? Where's kinger? Yay, kinger's back. Oh, yes, Tesseract. Oh, you said Tesseract people. Yeah, I did. So, um, Ash, who is Alien Glowed Painting, uh, gave me a 54mm scale Inquisitor. Um, Eisenhorn. I keep going to call it Eisenstein because we're listening to Flight of the Eisenstein at the moment uh, while we're working. So he has been really, I've smoothed a lot of the jacket off, uh, the cloak off to get rid of some of the lines um, and then sprayed it in a minute here, black. But as you can see, if you look from the top, it looks just as though it's white. And if you look from the bottom, it looks very dark so that's zenithal highlighting basically what you do is you spray the miniature black and then from a 45 degree angle spinning it round you spray down on it very lightly and build it up bit by bit and what that does it it hits 
where the light would hit but not where the light doesn't hit so you can use it for two different reasons what you can use it for is you can use um, transparent pl uh, transparent paints slightly well less opaque than normal and then paint the stuff in the white shines through and it gives you a really good um, highlight and um, shadows and stuff like that or you can use an opaque paint and use the bright parts on his cloak on his head and stuff like that as like a painting by numbers so you know that that part there needs to be fairly light because that's where it's got but it's the same color here but you're going to paint it in dark um, and that's basically a way Zenithal can help you actually paint a miniature I know a lot of painters who will just rattle can it and then spray it from the top down probably a higher angle than you would at an airbrush probably about 60 70 degrees down over and it gives lots of these points where you can pick up um, the light and the dark areas and you get to know where to paint from that we're going to be doing this like a, there's a lad uh, called Ninjon who does um, a lot of YouTube videos and he did one of these and he did some basic wet blending on it and then he uses some enamel washes so me and Jack have been on, uh, skirting around enamel washes and oil washes for some time so I've actually took the decision that I'm going to oil wash this fella um, with some enamel and let's see how it goes uh, I've bought some bits and pieces to clean him up as well so he's done I finally got Luke into black primer so Luke's ready to go again I'm going to set zenithal this uh, when I get chance and then I'm going to use the um, transparent orange for his flight suit and then that would give it the um, pre it would like shade it for me so I don't have to do shading and stuff like that <laughs> yeah N I found out one of my close friends has a lot of them uh, and when he finds them he's sending them all up to me so the 54 mil stuff could be quite a feature of the uh, the show for a bit uh, so yeah Luke's going to get painted um, I'm going to probably sit down and do a painting session this Friday to try and relax and chill out a bit so on my table I've got Eisenhorn um, Luke a couple of bits to finish on that one. Oh, nice uh, what would it be very similar well the the contrasts would show through more in certain areas the contrast would probably really work well uh, I've seen a lot of people use the zenithal highlighting that way uh, the other one is you know we're starting to um, work and play on the Battletech stuff my favorite mech on there is the Atlas and Ronan who is one of our printers um, actually got me an Atlas and printed it it looks so good so that is one that we're going to paint up very soon in the same in the same color scheme as my other ones I need a hex base for it Uh, I've heard that before Con, um, one of the big things about Eisenhorn is people have him on the shelf brand new in the box but they're scared to paint him knowing that he is creeping up in value and more and more and more and more and stuff like that and it gets to the point where it sits there and it never gets painted it's your miniature mate paint it if it comes out and you're not happy with it there's ways to strip them now you can strip them back you can clean them and you can have another go methylated spirits i put um miniatures through the um the meths tank quite often to clean them off and it it doesn't take much there may be a reference to the person who owned that one but you're not the only one there's loads of people that saying that they've got them and they never do anything with them which is unfortunate um so yes, that's that's the bits and pieces that we're doing for that. 
and hopefully some more 54 mil I like the 54 mil right so um, I did but it gets expensive mate. when we were doing hundreds and hundreds of models it was easier just to I've got a um, uh, not electrostatic uh, ultrasonic bath about it around about a it's about a five litre one and drop them all in in a frying pan thing set it away come back 20 minutes later pull it out under the tap and it's done the thing is you've you've painted it it's yours no matter how good or bad it is I've shown you my bad paint work um, I've done loads of bad paint jobs you were here when the fatal blow was dealt to Boba Fett and he was thrown in the bin. Not that I would say throw Luke in the bin, but I dug him back out and um, stripped him back down. Right, so I just went through on Luke. And, yeah, lost my Inquisitor's models are absolutely fantastic. Um, there's a couple that I really, really want that I know I'll probably never get. Uh, one's the Vindicator Assassin. <coughs> so, at half eight, we have the usual um, giveaway. So, the box giveaways. Unfortunately, Zoe hasn't had a chance to do any stickers this week. She's been really busy as well. Um, what I will do is the three people that win, they will get the usual pulls. But, as a bonus, um, I'll use those three. So, Will, the cards have turned up. So next week, Zoe will have put all of these into sleeves for me, and they will be in the pulls. So these are all of the Ready Room cards. So we will be giving, they will be going into the um, prize pull pot, as it were. But today, instead of Zoe um, doing the stickers, we will give one of the X-Wing Ready Room cards away, one with each. X-Wing Kinger, X-Wing. And we lose Kinger. But you might get some in the, the pulls. of them so yes the reason Zoe has been um, not getting much of the stickers done this week she has been doing one-off pieces of art now they're over on um, basically they're on Protec again under the Zoe art section I will put a post up um, So she's done some watercolours. Now, these watercolours are literally the uh, one-offs. So she's going to do various watercolours over the coming month. And basically, yeah, they are one-offs. There will only be one of them. Or one of each, sorry. So she's done a Boba Fett and a Death Star so far. So, in in her own art style that she's really enjoying doing. So they're over there. If anyone wants them, yeah, they're they're about that big. Really nice. So these need priming. So we're going to prime them and then yeah, they they're really nice cards. So yes, we'll have the usual. It will be uh, five pulls for followers, uh, seven pulls for subscribers, and the usual 12 pulls um, for uh, anyone who donated tonight. We are £25 into the 
February goal. The February goal is a complete starter set of Dystopian Wars, which is really nice. Right, so what I'm going to quickly do is we need to get the black down on them. Um, I want a black primer and then silver over the top. This airbrush has had a hammering for the last couple of days. Get that onto there. So this is the one that has got a mechanical whale in it. Um, so they have whales that get put into the tubes. I'm presuming they're uh, these. Well, I think Steve said that they're these little things. Um, hold them on with blue tack or something like that um, but yes to try and keep the zenithal across the board pretty much the same there's no point of doing the arm in a different position while you're zenithaling, zenithaling and then attach it and it look out of place So just, just a bit of blue tack to hold it, um, it in place where you would normally have the glue and then... If that makes sense. And so, I have to hold that bit, so, and I'm still getting... So that's why those little bits haven't got any paint on. I will get them in the second pass. So. You could do these on a cool. Mine need all my. I think at least three or four of my brushes need a good strip down and a good service. Um, I have bought all the bits to do it. I just never got around to doing it because I keep using them. So what I was considering is if I know where the old mat is. Right, look, no, that's the old. Cool, I'll use this. Yeah, cool, I'll have a look. I'll catch up in a, mi in a minute with the uh, messages. While these are dry.
I'll be back in a moment. <laughs> oh. So there we go. So I have all them on the board and they are now nicely primed. So my fingers. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of people use the blue tack method when it comes to uh, like blend, wet blending, zenithal highlighting and anything look like that. Just remember, I know where you live, Ash. I'll come and kick your bins over. Definitely bins threatened at half an hour. of paint left in my airbrush so I'm going to quickly do the resin um, mech I know I've talked about this a lot but I have so many friends at the moment that are in the position we can't paint any miniatures because we can't go outside and we can't put um, primer down so we can't do the minis, we're going to have to wait for a good day when it's not snowing or when it's not cold. Um, I know it's not ideal doing this indoors, but... I do a lot of priming inside. As long as you do it in an area where a little bit of build-up of dust and stuff isn't too much of a problem, like my uh, studio, then having an airbrush for priming a lawn is perfect so unlike a rattle can um, I can just do a little bit so I'll do it so you can see it on the thing So I'm literally just hitting, and there's none going down there. So I'm just picking up the bits that need everything, uh, that just need priming. Local area spring, not going too daft. As I said, this is just off the back of spraying other stuff. I've got some left in the gun. 
I do usually have a couple of bits sat around. And I say, none's gone down here. It's all just gone on there. You've got a lot more control. It comes out of the pot. It goes onto the miniature itself. You do get some in the air. So cleaning is a two second job. Um, if you've got a bucket next to your table. And after the day, just strip it, give it a good clean. Um, in between daily uses, I just run it through with water and some airbrush run through. And then the primer goes on well, it's warm, it doesn't cause too much of an issue. So, yeah, it's. The amount that you save and the amount of stuff you can do, it just makes it so much easier. Yeah. Exactly what Archon said. But, as yeah, as I say, an airbrush for that purpose alone for just putting down um, primer priceless it is priceless and probably after the first um, bottle of primer you've probably made more money back than you would on rattle cans because you think the rattle cans from GW are now 15 quid a can so after 10 rattle cans, you've got yourself a half decent airbrush setup. So 15 rattle cans, you're into um, one of each colour primer, um, and you're quite on your way to actually starting to recoup some of your money that, yeah, that you've used and stuff like that. Yeah, if I could find a decent distributor in the UK, we would sell airbrushes, but I'm pretty stuck on my um, badgers, and badger already have a setup in the UK, so I don't really want to go stepping on badger toes. Um, yeah, the, there's a couple that are now 18, so I think the Retributor Gold is £18 a can. There's the, I uh, think, Retributor Gold and possibly the um, Contrast ones. They went up stupidly in, f in price. Uh, Harder and Steinbeck Eclipse? Uh, HMS? Look at that. I don't use it. Um, this is probably my Ferrari of airbrushes. I know it's not cheap. It's the Infinity CR Plus. And it is an absolute doozy. But I'm so scared to use it. Uh, because some of the parts in that brush are the same price as my other airbrushes. Oh, the eye water. Um, oh, one of them. HPCS, yes, that's the HPCS. Uh, I got that off uh, the recommendation of Rasta. It's just been one of those that I couldn't get away with. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just like the uh, what's it called? Um, the sortars. My sortars get hammered, and I mean hammered week in week out they're just constantly getting um abused and i've got f four or five of them now so it's like yep cool mm. right so box art for this uh we were going to do it as per what the box said and i put the box away somewhere safe where did the safe box go? Ah. 
safe box. So, for everyone who is donating and stuff like that, that is the prize for this week. Uh, sorry, for this uh, month. Um, it is the Hunt from a Prometheus two-player starter set, uh, which I was wanting to look. So they are mainly a deck tan grey silver. So, yeah, all of the silver. Now, question: Do I airbrush them silver and bring them in line like that, or do I heavy dry brush them silver? I'm thinking paint silver wash. Let me have a look what lovely silvers we can use. Yeah, the Tesseract won't go over the uh, the colour we've got on there now. So, jet exhaust. I do like my jet exhaust. As you can see, that's the colours that we've got on the tops. Um, and I do like my steel. I could do a steel. I know they are quite light on the box, but I'm just... Gunmetal grey. Um, dull aluminium. See, if I do steel... Or jet exhaust. I'm gonna go with jet exhaust. So jet exhaust, I can wash them and then um, give a bit of a like a, a nulling wash across them, and then bring them back up with a bit of a dry brush. So. Cheers, Archonin. That's spot on. You're a star. It is much appreciated. Ooh, now a question. I've got exhaust manifold and jet exhaust. This one has slight tint of... Yeah, we'll use jet exhaust. Oh, uh, exhaust manifold. <laughs> Hello there. Yes, uh, I have the fortunate thing of uh, stocking the metal colours. Um, I have all of them, and we have all of them in stock, I think. So I do like to treat myself to uh, having the the nice shiny colours. Right, get the airbrush back out. Oh, co copper and gold are just, they're the, probably the hardest two to get in the UK as well. Um, but it is just, yes, I do have my favourites, Kinga. Uh, I, <laughs> the two exhaust colours are massively my favourite colours. Uh, but yes, uh, cool pack, the, um, The copper and the gold seem to be quite hard to get hold of. Uh, right, I'm going to do this this way again, so I'm not... So one of the ones that doesn't work is zenithal highlighting and then putting one of these metallics over the top of it. Tried that. Um, the coverage on the metal from Vallejo is just that. That little bit too good. So as you can see, that's the colour it's coming out. I love that colour. And yes, it is favouritism. You know what, Kinger? If I could get a dragon that would suit this colour, I'd probably do one in jet exhaust. The 
The other good thing with these metallic colours is they work just as well with a normal brush as they do with an airbrush. Um, it's the whole thing that drew me to them in the first place. Wizkid Silver Dragon could work. Um, I'm sure I've got one. Didn't I do one? I did a cover. Uh, I do need to get my dragons back together. Eh, you never know. I'm sure that somewhere Zoe painted a um, bronze one as well for us. I've got no idea where a lot of the stuff is at the moment. You've seen the shop, Ash. It's a pain in the butt to get anything sorted in there at the moment, let alone finding stuff. Right, I'm going to put these back on that um, on the mat. Hopefully, some more. Yeah, uh, some of them are already painted. You can get them unpainted now. You know what would I think would be cool for one of these sets? I think these are probably the set to do it. Is a set in copper with verdigris all over it. So, I've invented a new game. It's called Blow Football. Uh, round, uh, I got them all. I haven't zenithal this uh, because the metallic doesn't really work that well. Ooh, I nearly just used it all. I need to do the bags. Um, it's it, it's a hard one to zenithal in metallics. Um, I'd need more practice or have a play around to see how stuff come out. As I say, this is hopefully the setup for the shop. So we have a demo set in the shop. Um, that is literally straight out of the bottle. Yeah, of the airbrush. It's already beautifully thinned. It just goes. It just does what it does. Um, it's very rare that I airbrush uh, um, with paint that needs thinning. I do prefer the ones that are straight out the bottle, straight onto the model. Yeah, I, I've used it on the brush. Well, I started using it on the brush. Um, 
but the airbrush side of things just makes it so much nicer as well and especially considering you're getting is it 32 mil which is twice the size of a gw pot probably more gw pot 17 some point um yeah quite a bit more and it's only twice the, well depending where you get it from it's a little bit less than twice the price But I've not seen a match. Um, not really, no. I don't really know of anything that comes close. My go-to brush metal normally is uh, Army Painters Plate Mail. I forgot them. Um, they need watercolours on, so let me... White, I think. So I'll do them white. Uh, thanks for the follow, mate. Um, so yeah, I tend to go through fits and spurts of what colours I use and uh, what companies. But we, me and Ron have been talking about this um, quite a bit. I've got go-to paints. Um, we were talking about Ninjon, who has go-to paints. One of the paints that I've been struggling to get has been pro krill paint and that's one of ninjon's like go-to um colors sort of thing he has a lot deco art i use for um oh mainly for i don't know what's it called For scenery um it has its ups and downs compared to some of the other acrylics out there um it is more an artist acrylic than a miniature acrylic so i've tended to keep with the um other stuff Pro Krill line, yes, I'm still waiting for some of them because we don't get them as easy as you guys do in America. Um, it is one of those that when the company that imports it gets it, they tend to go out of stock overnight. So I've got everything but the base set. Um, but I've got the full set of Monument Hobbies uh, Bombwick brushes um, and any of my yes it's element uh, any of my patrons who by the way I have a patron if anyone yeah you know patron um, but yeah I have a patron where I've just done a I wouldn't say a brush review but a what brushes and what brushes I use video um, on there and that has my thoughts on the the bomb wicks and the monument hobby stuff. I need to spend more, a little bit more time with them, but yeah, they're all right. I, I'm never, I'm never going to. I won't say never. It's going. Who knew we had a patron? Yeah, it, it is news. Uh. <laughs> so patrons. <laughs> yeah, um, I did another video this week for the patrons. Hopefully, get another one done at the weekend. Um, so we've had a brush care one, we've had a um, what brush one. So you just gave me a few ideas last time for videos, but I'm also going to be doing some uh, for Warlord Games, some bits and pieces to show off some of their products. Um, hopefully some quick painting tutorials for things like the Bismarck and stuff like that. So, but yes. 
you guys paying into the patron, you guys um, donating, subscribing and all that keeps me able to do this. Um, and I love doing it. <laughs> Catch you later, Paul. So yeah, you your guys you guys support is really really well, Craig. It just so happens. There's more around here somewhere. Um, we probably will be met. There is talks with Warlord. We we had a little bit of a falling out some years ago, and they've done quite a bit to to coax us back. Let's say that. Um, and the lad that I'm dealing with at the moment is really good, really helpful. So we got the first one that we were trying is the. Uh, victory at sea set um, which really has sold quite a bit wow um, yeah so I'll definitely be restocking tomorrow um, but there's a starter left there's a German starter fleet left and a Imperial Japan naval fleet left and then some odds and bits and pieces of single ships there has there's a new set and we've asked about it because snowy's been asking about it uh the british and canadian set which look really cool so that might be one we um bite the bullet on and start stocking it greg the only downside is the price point um, I'd, I'd love to stock everything for you guys at the price that I could just give you what you want the only problem is there's bigger bigger meaner nastier companies out there that um, are basically more in it for the money than building the communities and stuff like that but we do have some <laughs> what will did you blink not only that will is they're all chrome coloured and dry that's a great thing of the uh, the washes uh, the army uh, yes the Vallejo colours is they really really do dry quick so one of the pack one of the paint sets that ninjon was on about and as soon as we can actually do something with these guys um we will be doing something with these guys to try and get some of them over here but they are like hen's teeth at the moment which archnil archnin will confirm so this is the chimera colors set that is the base range of it um, apparently from what's in there you can make any colour just by mixing it yourself there is everything that you need the red is fantastic I used the red, the yellow and the white and the black last night and they are fantastic colours um, beautiful set of paints uh, and you're going to see me using a lot of them unfortunately I will try and get them into stock I will try and get them for patrons as well um, and yes I need this paint set uh, <laughs> sorry right I need to change the mat because what I don't want to do is mess up my mat um, those ones on eBay have gone as well so they've actually all f fully gone. He's got none left. Which was a little bit of a shame because he had some of the special edition sets. Which I was like, <clears throat> could have done with them. Um, but, uh, yeah. Going off Ninjon's top whatever paints. 
those Chimera colours feature in a lot of them. So, um, that is the exhaust colour. So, it's got a brown tint to it. I'm going to use Agrax to wash them down with. Um, you lucky people as well. My Agrax 50-50 has run out. Or just about. So, what you get to see is me make a mess. So, this is Agrax where it's 50-50. 50% 50 50 Agrax and 50% Lamium Medium. So the way I do this is one pot of each. A tub of some description. And here's the lid off a spray can. Oh no, no. Um, it was me that missed it. I missed a uh, Inquisitor model that went for nine quid. One of the ones that I'd really love to do as well. So this is just a full pot of Lamium Medium. Um, just double check it. Give it a good shake. Oh, what did you miss today? Uh, so in it goes. Put it to one side. Agrax, that has settled. You can see it at the bottom is all settled. Give it a good shake. Oh yeah. Yeah. I did say to myself I wasn't going to buy any more of the um, 54 mil scale figures until I'd finished painting Eisenhorn. And then there was one that was uh, Slick Devlin, the, where he's got two guns out in front of him. Really cool pose. And it went for £9. And I just totally forgot about it. It's not the first thing that I've missed because of it. Forgetting as well. So, that is two pots. Um, one is, as I say, Agrax Earthshade. And the other is... Lamium medium, upside down the brush, give it a good squirrel, let it run off, quickly test the concept, that's cool. So on the lids, um, I tend to, if I can find a pen, I have my own marking system for different thicknesses, just so I'm constant, not change, swapping and changing. He says not able to find a pen. I'm going to put it away. Not in there. So anything that is pure Agrax or pure Nullin is just clear. Um, what I do for 50-50 is put a cross on it. Um, I will also do the same on the Lamium. I'll show you why in a minute. But on the Lamium, I will also put on the back... An a, so I know it's Agrax. Because uh, that won't all fit in one pot. And then using one of our super special um, Protec pot holders, I'm going to. Oh, not that one first. I'm going to fill the pot. So the last bit out of there. I'm not listening to you, Jack. Uh, to you, um, Will. I'm not going to knock it over. So, good thing with using a lid, it turns into a funnel. And one pot. One pot of 50 50. 
second one. It's ready to go. I'll put that down in the cleaning pot. And that one can go away in the drawer. But I know I've now got a full pot of it and a pot spare. So the good thing with it is with doing it 50-50 like that, you are pretty much guaranteed to have the same level if I pit, if I wash these now to if I wash them in a few weeks' time. I'm still going to get the same um, level. I'm not mixing it on the fly each week. Um, so it just, it's easier to, uh, to repeat the results. But also, part of it is um, laziness as well. So, I could probably work it out, do drops, do six drops of each and then do enough for what I need. But when you're doing so many models and stuff like that, it gets to the point where it is worth just making it up yourself uh, and having it ready to go. So, there's one. again it's just tinting it it's putting the lines in where it needs to be but it's also giving it a little bit of a brownish tint which not rust but an actual like more exhausty type look which is pretty cool um, these are pretty much these are unlike figures and stuff like that because they're designed to go flat so having them at this sort of position can get your bench mucky as well <laughs> there we go, there's three of them uh, I'll do one of the big ones and it is Paint, basic painting, painting by numbers, put the primer on. Primer helps the paint stick to the plastic. It bites into the plastic and holds holds a surface for the, the actual colours to um, connect to. Once you've got the colours on, you choose your base, go with your base, whatever's going to be the main colour usually, or... Um, the more prominent colour. Paint that on. Then I tend to do the wash and a bit of a dry brush after that. And then I go for the details. So once you start once you've got this done, there's a big chunk of the work already done then. So you can actually just then go, right, I'm gonna do a dry brush and then uh, with these I'm actually going to go back to the airbrush for some glow effect so once all of this is, I need it perfectly dry so that probably won't be this week um, but they've got lots of glowing green lights on on the box art so I'll probably go in with the the airbrush and pick out lots of bits and pieces once it's ready to go and there won't be much more after that uh, they're a metallic hull chip that You've done a lot of the work with the wash, a lot of the work with the dry brush. Um, getting the right colours to start with probably is the bigger part of the uh, the process. So I know what colours I wanted. Don't get me wrong, there's no right and wrong colours. You can do them pink, you can do them yellow, you can do them whatever colour you want. But as I said, I wanted them in... Not in Tesseract before King of Starts. <laughs> Laziness and time saving. A little column A, a little column B. <laughs> Scenery mark. Um, I make my own washes. I don't use GW Wash just because of the price. 
uh, when we did that last lot of scenery I used about 300 mil 400 mil of our scenery wash um, and that was of each color so if I had to do that in GW that's 10 pots of each uh, 10 pots of each is the best part of even at the prices we get it for uh, best part of 40 50 quid uh, and I can't afford to do that the, the stuff that we made was 15 quid and <laughs> I got enough in that to do the scenery that we've done and there's enough there to do at least another two or three sets uh, of the same and I'll say that about 15 quid all in uh, and it is uh, our good friend Luke Fellows his recipe really easy to make uh, we did use the posh stuff the um, the pucker bits and pieces instead of the floor polish and stuff like that again just to get um, the same sort of results each time we use it and it's good uh, it worked the black gave some weird effects oops um, I think down to the ink that we were using so the ink when we came to put it on I was blending washes to get black and brown together and when I blended it together it actually went um, and partially separated so we got green uh, from the black and where it had partially separated and the green like basically split off from the back black it gave some pools of like like fetid goop pools which in the Mechanicum, or in the, um, not the Mechanicum, in the Imperial sector, worked really well. So, yeah, I was quite pleased with that. Happy little accidents and all that. So, while I'm doing this, what else have we had? What other questions have we got? Uh, laziness times. It is time saving, but it is. Yeah, that's perfect, Well, But if you imagine, if you had um, five tables of that, to, ooh, too much, five tables of that to do, how much Agrax is that going to then cost you? It's a lot money-wise. And then you start taking scenery from the 20, 30 quid to paint it up to 50, 60 quid to paint it up. It becomes more expensive than the models that you're painting. Cool. I need a little bit more on some bits of that. Um, Tomo, how am I going to paint the water? You mean the white bits? I am actually going to paint the silver on it first. Um, but the water is very easy. Uh, it's got the texture in there already, which really does help. Uh, but we also have uh, Vallejo's water effect, which... I think I've got Pacific or Mediterranean and that that can actually turn a flat base into water effect um, and then we do have the water foam spray that goes over the top of it uh, for like yeah for the spray and stuff like that right there is some decking down in these ones so they will get a wood coating later on but for now we'll just get the usual metal effect and wash I'll 
spread it out. So the metal decking on the top bit gets all the egg racks. Uh, still need to do down into the wood, where, which is down here, because if there's any edging or any metal bits, I won't be painting that. So need them done now. And I think that's undone. And this is where I start getting egg racks everywhere. Yeah, again, it's the consistency of if I do these ships this week and then want the other ships in a couple of weeks' time, my go to would be the same now as it would be then. So I have already used the um, water effects for the dragons. I don't know how they work and I, I really really get away with them with a brush oh dear Mark uh, how you doing uh, is there some border with wash or you can add as much of it as what every time right when you add the wash can you see there where it's starting to let me go close see where where it's starting to build up a little bit I know at that point I might have done a little bit too much um, ooh, or not enough where it's not the right color but as some of this will get a dry brush over the top of it um, most of it should just run off like you've got there but if it's still wet just use your brush pick up some bits the life of the wash can actually give the more character to the actual product like uh, actual finished uh, product so if you put too much on like that that's too much because it's swilling about just work it about um, work it into the the gaps and stuff like that You can always add a little bit more. Go in with pin wash or add add bits. It's very hard to take it away because it means going back in with the um, the actual colour that you started with, then washing it again. And if you've done anything like zenithal or um, anything like that to start with, then it's going to be really really hard to get the the natural colour back. Which one of those things um, I do get asked it quite a bit. How much is too much? When do you know you've done it? too much if it's dripping off use a clean brush and just pull it away take it away from um, the areas where it's pooling the areas where it's streaking and then just clean it up move it around push it around with the brush I use a size 5 uh, one of the pure Kalinskis uh, it's my go-to brush for doing washes um, once you've got it to a coated level where you've basically coated everything um, how, mu how much you want it to and stuff like that that's when the, the wash starts working it starts moving to the edges starts filling the recesses the gaps forming round rivets and stuff like that and at that point it's when it starts taking over and does it all for you used to be called skill in a pot uh, thank you for the follow as well yes exactly mark um, I have got dip tanks so when I did a load of um, Imperial fists in yellow to get the same yellow constantly uh, if you applied it with a brush like this you could put too much on one not enough on another and I ended up spending a fair chunk of money on enough wash to make a dip tank out of the yellow I think I bought 10 if I remember rightly 
10 pots of the wash but it was because i was doing a full army it was a commission i wouldn't do it if it was just me doing a, a couple of figures or something like that but it really served a purpose there is companies out there that do um dip washes um one of them being army painter the only downside with the army painter one is it goes slightly shiny so you've got to um, use a matte varnish on it after you've done it and if anyone was wondering where um, testers dull coat's gone um, we were told last week, or it might have been the week before, that it is no longer being produced. So, Rustolium have st ceased production, which is sad. So, that's them all washed. Oops, sorry. And what's that took? By the time I stopped chatting, probably an hour. Uh, base coat. Sorry, primer, base coat, wash. Um, some people would probably go, eh, you know what, add a couple of daft bits and they're done. Um, so, I have seen less painted stuff. But, yeah, they, they just need to dry now. Clean area. Right. Ah, da, 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 da. Liquid, liquid talent. It's always going to... Yeah. Yes. Uh, the only way, So I tend to do that um, when, when the whole model is one colour. Slap it over. Unless it's a model where it's got like a brown and a, a grey on that I want to be blending together, then it is worth putting a, a brown over all of it and it brings it together a bit but if it had yellow and green and red and stuff like that i would just go each individual bit with the wash particular to that one yes putting null and all over red can be interesting part of what i've learned is if you put it all over if you put some of the thin down stuff all over, it's a lot more controllable, if that makes sense. And you don't get as much mess. And you don't have to keep changing mats, so it's all squidgy. Yeah. Um, what I say is, this is how I do it. <coughs> There's a hundred other painters out there that would go, oh no, you don't do it like that, do it like this. And there'll be another hundred painters that say we're both wrong. Everyone has their way of doing stuff. Everyone has a painting style. Everyone's painting style comes through different. And it is something that you just... You adapt to. You find ways to make it easier for yourself. It might not be the easiest way out there. But it's the easiest for you. Um, just go with what you're most comfortable with. Nowadays I use contrasts to build up with washes and dry brush highlights. Yeah, I'm going to over the 20 years. I know the contrast from watching other painters. <laughs> Contrasts are hit and miss. There is some good ones, some really good ones, and there is some bloody awful ones. Yeah, everyone does everything differently. But painting is one of those ones where I've been doing Death Guard since before Death Guard came out. I've been doing those Death Guard in a certain way. Sorry, not Death Guard. Death Troopers in a certain way. Same way I do my Decimators. Same way I do my own personal TIE Fighters when I do the black scheme with the, the metallic black where the... It's basically a very heavy dry brush of something like Chrome over the black and then do a, a null in wash and then if get to the point where the null in washes start to darken the model up fully so you can just to say see the, the silver through and it gives a really really deep matte metallic chromey look 
from behind it as a Yes, yeah. It's the same with washers. If you slap it on, you're in trouble. Um, I can actually say, look, I was using um, Aragos Dunes for the towel. I put the main coat down with the towel, then went back in with the airbrush to hit some highlights and stuff like that. But I did find pools. If I hadn't had the the colours on it, uh, the base on it, you could have seen where it had pulled horribly. Yeah, pur purple, the purple one is horrendous. Um, I think mine's in the bin, probably. Um, it's not good. So, um, what else is that? Whatever, I was hearing of other, yeah. I do like, so, for Space Marines, uh, if you're doing Space Marines, the... The black bits on a space marine, the, the like the um, the arm joints and the where it is black. Using contrast, the black contrast on there is absolutely fantastic because it just pulls and moves and goes where it needs to. There's a lot less time needed to paint those bits. You can probably cut it down by less than half. So it's yeah, it's it's really good. So giveaway time let's have a look let's get this giveaway looked at uh it's on here somewhere i haven't set it up too busy talking giveaways yeah it just works they're really good for it again tools for jobs uh, Wednesday night giveaway. So, we go back to... I've just put them somewhere and lost them. Tonight's giveaways, you get one each of these um, X-Wing promos from the X-Wing Ready Room guys. Will and um, Mark in the chat. So, there is one each of them to go with the prizes. So... Whoever wins one of the pulls tonight will also get one of them. It's, it's instead of the stickers because we we couldn't get the stickers done in time. Uh, but stickers will be back. We know how many people are liking the stickers. So they're the pulls, the usual things of... Ooh. That's one of the Rasta paint jobs ones. <laughs> Right, so yes, anyone that enters tonight can win one as long as you are a follower. Uh, followers get five cards from the promo box. If you're a subscriber, you get seven pulls from the box. And if you are one of tonight's donators, you get 12 pulls from the box, which uh, is uh, which is really good. Um, so, usual thing is anyone can enter. Um, it is going to be a 20 minute raffle. Um, subscribers get an extra ticket. Tickets cost 100 each. Um, and maximum tickets of 10 tickets per user. So. Uh, 20 minutes starting now. He says now. So I will put them down there for now. And have we broke it already? There we go. It has come up. So what we do at this point is go to the big chatting thing in the sky it's by the way it's raffle exclamation raffle and a number <laughs> I don't know how far back we went Um, 
I'll go f far back as Will's last picture of his scenery. That I haven't got up on that. Um, so gallery. Here we go. So we have got Will's um, scenery with some of his snipers and a vin. That looks like a vindica hidden behind there. Um, yeah, this is what Will was on about earlier. He's been doing the wash and then typhus corrosion and then the right uh, razor rust. Um, yeah, catch you tomorrow, mate. Take care. So yeah, that's the scenery that um, Will's been doing. Is that that? That's working. Um, so Archon, who has just disappeared, that's his setup with his painting area. It's far too clean and clinical for me. Um, Mark starting on his orcs from his uh, Blood Bowl teams. And so we've had 11, 11 people enter with 60 tickets so far. Uh, Ronan's workspace getting tidier and tidier. Um, more pictures of Will's. Is it Prometheum pipes? I'm thinking it's called Prometheus or Prometheus pipes or something like that. He's literally just built it, mate. So uh, he's only just moved in. So yeah, I do like the snow effect. Um, I've never thought of a 40k battle area in snow. Might have to uh, consider that one. Um, Snowy has been doing some amazing uh, spell effects. And these are not with a airbrush. These are just done with normal brush and dry brush and stuff like that. He's a really good painter. He doesn't um, he doesn't let on, but he really is a good painter. Um, Mark making more progress, which is contrast. It's <laughs> yeah, Fenris. Fenris. Um, that is the other set um, from the starter set, which Ronan is doing, which includes like the Russians and stuff like that, all included in that one. Um, yeah, yellows. Yeah, yellows. Yellow. So, this is Snowy's latest shambling horde of zombies. <sighs> Wow, just absolute <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, Snowy does really good zombies. They look class. They look exactly like zombies. Uh, some more. I'm guessing MDF terrain with the overlaps. I like the bro broken bits in it. Give it a different bit of uh, different bit of uh, bit of character to them. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, probably whoever can beat the other one up with the uh, yeah laser cuts stuff. Yeah, um, Mr. Standers augers from his um, Blood Bowl teams, Blood Bowl starter set. Each time I see Paul's work, it has improved. He's picked up new stuff. The slight blending on the teeth, which look cool now. So he must have picked that up from someone. Wasn't me. 
Orcs, what did I say, Mark? Goblins? Orcs and goblins, green skinned things. Ogres, oh, yeah. They're all big and smelly and horrible, so. Personal taste is the metal's a bit bright, but. Um, I think these next will run and pitch. Yeah, yep. Yeah, um, maybe some rust on them. I don't know if they would be rusty, but yeah, a bit of muck on them. Yeah. Um, Bengar rattling through some more work. He does more bloody painting than. Yeah. Oh, look. He's got uh, the really, really nice tufts in the background. I wonder who supplies them. Uh, that's getting more yellowy. Edge highlights coming in. The highlights on the skin. Looking cool. Butt cheeks on the shore. Typical orc. Yeah, I thought so, Paul. More so. I still haven't done my... Oh, got my army yet? Uh, my blood ball team. Uh, Snow speeder. It's looking cool from Cornwolf. The only thing that Snow speeder is missing is an at at foot coming down on top of it and squishing it. That's what it needs. All Snow speeders should have a good squish. From a uh, from an at at. I like the windows as well. They uh, they look cool. Uh, Dave from Direct Painting has been doing some Sentinels. Yeah, Mark ninety percent of showing stuff off is getting a good camera or getting good try it with good lighting so sometimes you can get a lot better photo if you get a lot more light into it um even if the light in your eyes looks too bright when your camera looks at it it can get rid of a lot of the graininess and stuff like that and then you get pictures pretty much like this one so yeah, um, has been three times skill. I don't know what he means by three times skill. Oh, that'd be huge. Yes, definitely. Or is that one in the front an epic one, Mark? There you go. Oh, do you know what he needs? To, he needs to do an epic one and sit in the front as well. Yeah, they do look cool. And then Ash was playing around with Donny Duck. Poor Bender's getting. Uh... Yeah, the the smaller one's epic. That's fine. We we can we'll go with that. Uh, and this was when. Oh, there you go. You can see the pooling of the contrast, how it went. On uh, on that picture, but yeah, this is the the start of some of the work that I was doing. Yay. And there is Eisenhart. And there's the picture of that. That's um, Ninjon doing them, doing the uh, the video of doing it. I think I can probably give that a go. Um, and born and showing your stuff. That's when I did the zenithal. So that's the zenithal from front on. 
and that's the zenithal from zenithal angle so you can actually see it a bit better I have just noticed something I didn't notice before can anyone see what I've just noticed oh. poop <laughs> uh oh <laughs> can anyone see what I can see on there A mould line on his foot. Yeah. Spent ages sorting his cape out and his head out. I have, I have no idea how I missed that. No, the sword's fine. Um, it is literally down here. There is a mould line straight down. And I've... <laughs> that will get redone. Trust me, Mark. Um, after telling people that mold line, you should spend more time doing mold lines. Wow, Mr. Dalton, you're such a hypocrite. Yes, Mark made the model for me. Uh, Chewie's company veteran. <laughs> uh, what's that phrase do as I say not as I do I literally take photos of my models and Ash will tell you how much time I spent smoothing the cloak out and I was like yeah when I saw that I, you don't understand how devastated I, I was I can't even now say to Chewie that there's a little mold line on his veteran, his company veterans squad chainsaw arm because then I would definitely be a hypocrite. Uh, company captain, looking cool. Yeah, I. The thing is, <laughs> yeah. Even in the short time, Chewie, the the change in your work, you can see it's getting better and better and better. I hope that's something I'm helping with. If not, then oh, well done without me. <laughs> um, so, yes, one good tip that I had, I don't, don't know if you have any yet. You might get some in the future. Patreon boxes couldn't possibly comment. But if you look there, see the the line in the power sword that is the power conduit so what some people do is run a little bit of blue ink around it and it gives a blue slight blue tinge to the metal and it just looks as though the power's going into it um i think there's one of them on both sides one on the top one on the bottom but you just put a very small amount using probably your size three to run a small amount of blue. Um, hi, Jinky. Boom. Oh. Yay. It's just slow. Is Jinky the Jinky that I know and think he is? Or have we got a new zinc jinky? Yes, GW1, mate. I use the GW1. I've not seen anything other than a GW1, to be honest, that's caught my eye. But I tend to use a knife blade. Um, I, I just use the edge of a knife blade. Um, so more Necrons from Mark. If it is Jinky, and I think it's the Jinky that I think it is, um, and he puts something into the gallery, um, I'm going to quit. Um, so Kinga has been doing some 
Yeah, oh god. Right, I, I think I um, can't be showing any of my work now. Um, so this is... <laughs> um, yeah, this is Kinga's Armada. These are tiny, by the way. You can tell because there's a keyboard above it. Uh, so they are cool. And, and some of his Tesseract... Tesseract Tearaways. Um, <laughs> you're more than welcome, Jake. Um, so, people who probably don't know, um, Jinky is one of the Warlord uh, Weekend Warlords X-Wing players that I met many, many, many moons ago. Um, he does an alright paint job here and there. He's been known to get away with it. But, uh, yeah, he does all right. And I have noticed, yes, there's loads of slots in the sides of that. Get some bloody masking tape over them. Get them filled, man. Tesseract Tots. That's what we were calling them, wasn't it? The Tesseract Tots. Um... Me, I tend to use um, super glue gel and a, a activator, but you can put a bit of uh, filler over it. T Tesseract toddlers, that it. That's it. Um, cut a bit of masking tape. Put the masking tape on, and then put your uh, basing material over the masking tape. That holds it down. As Ash says, green stuff, Fimo, um, Milliput, anything really. Um, if you want to stop any of the Milliput or anything falling out the bottom, just put a bit of masking tape underneath. But yeah, they are cool. Uh, Ash Ash's oof. It's it's an elf, yeah. It's one of those tree elf things. Uh, 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 you have one minute twenty seconds left for the raffle. Raffle zero. <laughs> You've already put some in, Mark. Um, that's one of the Tonka Toy guns from uh, GW stuff. Mr. Pollard, I don't know if he's um, in the stream. Wave if you're in the stream, Rich. Um, yeah, Rich. Rich is a, a, a good painter. Um, oh, Jake, I've got you so good on this one. Ah, ha, ha. Anyway, so these are done by Rich, one of our locals. Uh, he does loads of painting. Um, puts me to shame all the time and they're cracking paint jobs for what as he said on this it is uh, contrasts so Jake what do we want to say about these lovely lovely Eldar jet bikes um, they're really really nice they're blue um, Are you on about the hexes, Egan? Please be on about the hexes, Egan. Oh, the hexes. <laughs> <laughs> so these are... Airbrush, yes. They are a hex um, airbrush stencil. Um, the re the reason that I know exactly how he did these is because we do paint stencils that do this and he didn't come to me for them feeling very sad and upset that a friend didn't come to me for one of our predominant <laughs> but I can hold it over him for ages now <laughs> so yes they do look good <laughs> yes oh dear um 
I have in the past. Sometimes you can do it as the first court. <laughs> yeah, I know, mate. I'm just pulling your leg. I'll pull it off next time. <sighs> now, uh, we did some Eldar Wraith Lord, um, some Wraith Garden, stuff like that, where their visors were done in exactly the same thing, but with a lot smaller hex, and it just made them look like a shield. And again, they look cool. Really easy to do, really easy to apply. To apply. If you don't stretch them and you don't rip them, they're usable two or three times. Yeah, speak to Bengar about that. <clears throat> no. <laughs> I I am a I am more than happy about a free market unless you go to other people. Um so yeah Jake stuff's pretty good. Are these actually Um there is other companies that do them but you shouldn't be going to them. Um so yeah. Are these actually your Eldar or are you doing them as a job, Jake? <laughs> PT is the only option. Um, ours, we have seven mil hex, which seemed to be more, people wanted more of the smaller sizes. We can do that if you want them in the future, Jake. Uh, Jake just let us know. Um, then we can do uh, different sizes for you. We can do whatever size you want. Um, but yeah, a lot of the Eldar players that have done stuff. Uh, that have bought the hexes off us or the it comes from the rc cars i used to do them for uh, remote control car body shells people used to spray that sort of pattern in them uh so seven mil seemed to be the most popular uh we used to do them all but seven just stuck for some reason welcome back zoe so yeah the pretty cool um, I do like the way you've gone with the blue rather than the generic black colours they are cool um, that is that's absolutely trippy as anything is that one of the flip paints or have you actually got purple in the background and blue in the front naturally? Well, by painting it. That's got some very, very deep colours in it. Yeah, there. That's. I do like the metallic blue. Uh, and then Wolfie. Cool. See, can't see any mold lines on that one. So, oh, there's a mold line. See, found a mold line mark. Mark, he's left a mold line on. I did like, I love painting the, um, the wolf guard that I did. The base is cool as well. <laughs> uh, at least mine isn't painted yet I, I can get bring mine back yeah do, what metallic blue is it well it's not half painted it's primed uh, I'm going to have to get a bit, bit of a move on because uh, I am running out. Oh, yay! Ash did zenithal highlighting. Not zenithal highlighting. Uh, that's not halfway painted. I'm spending hours on this thing. Um, object source lighting. It's cool. Yeah, that's a one mark. 
my head's in the clouds. Um, I don't even know what day it is. So, that is everyone up to date. Um, go to, no, I'll close that one down. It's Wednesday, it is Wednesday. It has been Wednesday all day. Yeah, it doesn't at the moment because we'll be doing um, three days this week. So one of, one of the paints that we're going to be trying um, is the new Army Painter Metallics. We managed to get um, our hands on some of them. Right, contrast, yeah. We've actually got some of the metallics. Uh, I got the full set. The ruby red looks ph phenomenal once it's on. Uh, I want to have a couple of players around with gemstone red, sorry. It looks cool. So we've got some bits and pieces to play around with them. And so does Ash, because he got them off us last week. So, the competition has ended. We have people who have entered, and it's time to pull some winners. So, we had 13 entries and 72 tickets. Every one of you will get one of the X-Wing ships from the ready... Uh, X-Wing ships... Uh, X-Wing ship cards from the ready room. And we will go with the first winner, because I've just realised the time. The first winner tonight is... The goddamn Tomo. So, that is... <laughs> well done, Tomo. Uh, you are a subscriber, so... Number one is angled deflectors. Number two is you get a foil rear admiral Shirano. That's never going to work, Lee. Come on, seven Idens. You can pull all the Idens if you want them. Uh, well, so, is it seven? I thought it was eight. Seven or eight. Seven. Seven, yes. Uh, there is a defense liaison. A Palpatine for five being Angel Gunner, six being Veteran Turret Gunner. You got all the Gunners, and the last one is Diamond Boron Missiles. And of course, one of the Ready Room cards. Let me just get. These days, I haven't changed any of them. I think uh, Archnin just got strangely, I'd say, lucky. Uh, Tomo. Uh, and winner number two is Archnin, who is going to get all of the bloody. Um, Yeah, I have noticed Arsenal starting to get quite a lot. One, two, that's up one, two, three, Iden, <laughs> four, five, ooh, Darth Vader, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, <laughs> Iden, 11, Palp, 12, so, Archnin, and last but not least I'm going to put that one back in somewhere about there and not look where it's got in so the last one for tonight is 
Ulfric. And that is seven. So, number one is one of the Kylos. Nice. Two is Imperial Royal Guard. Three is Logistics Division Pilot. Four, Palp. Five, Palp. Five, oh, Tontons. Tontons. Six is Sabathro. Seven is the Foil Rear. That is seven. Seven, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the eighth card being the X Wing one. <laughs> yes, fix. He never wins anything. <laughs> and so that's all of them. I'll put Palpy back up there. But what I do have is, if I remember rightly, there's all of them at the back. So yeah, Mark, I definitely didn't take them out. <laughs> so there'll be a load of ready room ones in here next week. Everyone got one of them uh, this week, but there'll be loads of ready room ones in there. Yeah, you know what's going to happen though, Mark, don't you? When you are win will win it, you will just get all of your own cards back. It happened with... Um, yes. K, exactly the same thing happened with K. He got all of his own cards back again, which was like... Uh, yes. Yeah, it was K. So, yep, yeah, there will be some sexy cards. So these are all going in maybe it's minus one or two of the imperial ones i don't know where the imperial ones will be getting lost but they may get lost so there's a few of the original ones and then padme boba fett luke dooku darth vader don't know where that darth vader went darth vader's managed to get lost somewhere uh leia uh, Asajj, Han Solo, Anakin, Obi-Wan, Dooku, Luke, Boba Fett, Asajj, Obi-Wan, Anakin, Han, Padme, Leia. These got mixed up, by the way. Vader, Dooku, Asajj, Boba, Luke, da, 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 da. So, Yes, you get the idea. Yes, there is a Ventress. Uh, that is just Asajji. All done in um, Camelot type. Uh, it feels very Camelot, um, Arthurian legend style. It, they are really cool. Um, the Ved is amazing. Well, the more people enter, the more chances you've got of landing them in in the states. Um, they will be, yeah, medieval. They do this medieval, but they do come over quite. It's like a Camelot tint to it, especially um, Vader with the. He looks like it very much like the Black Knight. Age of Chivalry. Hey, Rattler. Long time no see. So, I will close that one down for the evening. Holy Grail. No, no. Ho Holy Grail is things like that, little fella. Um, I, I have got a bucket list. Um, All of them are on my bucket list. Yes, I do understand that, mate. I, I'm covered today in all kinds of crud from carpet, lifting carpets about. <sighs> Don't make me. Right.
So while this guy is losing his mold line, I am not going anywhere until this mold line has gone. Catch you tomorrow, Tomo. So these, I've never seen these before, uh, and it was Ronan that pointed us in the right direction. They're lovely little tools for getting rid of mold lines. Smooth the one and finish it off. <laughs> That's done. I'm not going anywhere until it has been rectified. It's all Mark's fault. Um, oh, that's not a bad shout, that will. So I'm just doing a bit of brush on primer. And the toes mold line vanishes just like that. There you go, Mark. I have no idea what you're on about. There is nothing there to see. <sighs> Not a thing. Anyway, <laughs> let me just close that one. Uh, I'll get some zenith all over that. Uh, yes, the alien from Toy Story, uh, lightsabers, the claw, I do like the lightsabers, yeah. Um, there's no mold line there, I don't know what you're on about. <laughs> Um, it depends, So you could probably do them quite big, maybe just do like a six inches, 100 mil, don't believe you Paul, but I do know you can go back and watch the video and see the mold line, but yeah, yeah that's another idea, stuff from Game of Thrones and yeah. So, thank you everyone for coming by tonight. Thank you for the donations, the subs, and all that sort of thing. Um, thank you for the gifted sub, Will. That is much appreciated. Um, we will be back tomorrow from 7. Uh, and we will be having some more fun with... Um, oh, before I go. Uh, there you go. That's what they look like now. They've got the brown tint to them, which is exactly what I wanted. They look cool. So, yeah, we will be back tomorrow with some mech warrior-ness. Um, so, again, thank you, everyone. Catch you all tomorrow. In the meantime, stay safe. Catch you tomorrow. I'm ignoring you, Mark. <laughs>